Hello everyone and welcome back to another video on our tutorial series where we talk about JPA. This video is actually, um, uh, let's say, uh, a review of the changes we already did. So I already uh, implemented one of the changes and I did a video on it, but unfortunately I deleted it by accident and now I don't have it anymore. So I will just go over the changes I had and explain what we have and what we have done in that video. Um, what happened there, so you can actually hear what you're looking at, is uh, the commit. So all of the changes uh, that I did during that video, so I explained everything of this, so we're going to be doing that. Um, what we implemented there is we try to implement a new specification which allows us to select by created timestamp. So the way we did it, we extended our distributed repository, added a method here, and then also did an implementation in the distributed repository implementation class. So there we implemented the method that's in the interface and uh, we have added a specification. So basically we wrote the query how to select based on the created timestamp. So um, what we have here is that uh, the timestamp is being forwarded to the, uh, to the method. So we can have it here. And then uh, we create this specification, so this private method here. Within it, you can see that we have, um, we named it created since, and it uh, returns a specification of an entity type. And there we have our root, we have our query, and we have our criteria builder. We're using a criteria builder to say, okay, give me everything that's greater than or equal to, and then you say which property. So this is the property. Here we are using our Hibernate meta model. So here we are just going on a distributed entity, so our mapped superclass. We creating we are using the created timestamp and then we are providing the value that's passed in. So we're saying okay, give me everything that's greater than or equal to this timestamp and take a look at this uh, and this property. If this would be a select or something like that, then you would say okay something like uh, select this property. So this is this is what you you're telling it. Okay, um, please take a look at this property here. And then uh, what we did is also we wrote some test. Um, let's let's actually dive into IntelliJ and uh, let's have a look at how does it uh, look like in the code. So um, let's go to our distributed repository implementation. So we can jump to the distributed repository actually. Uh, this is what we have here, that's uh, something else. So that we have done some changes afterwards. So that's uh, another video, it's already covered. Uh, I didn't delete that one, luckily. So here uh, we have the method that we created. So find all created since, we have our timestamp and then we have the created since uh, method. If we jump to it, you can see that's the specification that I've been talking about. And if you jump to this um, property here, you can see this is on the distributed entity class and there we have an ID and a modified timestamp. And this is how you uh, say, okay, uh, do a select on uh, this property and compare it with this value that's been passed in here. And what we did in our uh, test, so we go to the address repository test and uh, we have it here. So we are testing uh, find created since. So we are, uh, first we cache our timestamp. So everything before uh, anything has been created. So we just remember what's the timestamp there. Then we create our first address uh, with some name. Then uh, we cache the timestamp um, before the second address is created so that we know that. And uh, then we create a second address. Okay, now the next step is we want to find all created since. And uh, what we do here in the first step is we use the current time. So give me everything that's been created since this moment. And of course that uh, is expected to return nothing because we didn't create anything uh, after this timestamp. So after this current moment, exact moment, we didn't create anything there. But in the next step, uh, we make a call with the cached timestamp. So the before create second address timestamp. So before the second address has been created. So find me everything created since this time here. And in this case, we expect to get one address and we expect to get second address because that one has been created after this timestamp, which definitely makes sense. And then in the last uh, case, we do uh, same call, but now with the first um, timestamp that we created here so that we cached there. Um, so give me everything that's been created after this timestamp, which is before anything has been created. And in this case, we expect to get both addresses. So the first one and the second one. 
it's a simple implementation. I'm sorry I uh, lost this video, but hopefully this uh, makes it up for it. So if something is unclear in this part, please uh, leave a comment uh, below the video or just write me an email. You can find it on my channel and I'll try to get to it. Um, thank you for paying attention and I will see you in the next video.